Got another set of questions for the amount of substance topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay so make a start. So the first thing we've got to do is work out how many moles of this halothane that we've got. So that's just mass over MR. So that comes out at 0 0.04. So the question is asking about how many fluorine atoms we've got. So in every mole of halothane we've got three moles of fluorine atoms. So the moles of fluorine atoms is going to be 0 0.04 times 3. So obviously 0 0.12. So to turn that into a number, we just multiply by Avogadro's number, which gives an answer of 7.224 times 10 to the 22. So moving on to the next question. So obviously to work out the identity of the gas, we need to know its MR. And to get the MR, we need to know the moles. So we need to rearrange the ideal gas equation for moles, so that's PV over RT. So we'll just put the numbers in, and as always, be really careful with your units. So pressure in the ideal gas equation has to be in pascals. Well, it already is, so that number goes straight in. The volume needs to be in cubic metres. They've put it in cubic decimetres, so we just put times 10 to the minus 3. So effectively, we're dividing it by 1,000 to go from dm cubed to metres cubed divided by the gas constant, multiplied by the temperature, which has to be in Kelvin, but they've given us it in degrees C. So we're just adding 273 to that. So that's coming out at 52.81 moles. So remember the MR is going to be mass over the moles. And just be careful with the mass because it's in kilograms. We have to have it in grams. So just multiply by 1,000. Molar mass comes out at 32. So the gas is likely to be oxygen O2. Moving on to the titration calculation. So you'll notice I've got a little picture here of the conical flask and the burette, just to get this color change right. So the acid is in the conical flask to start with. So phenolphthalein is colorless in acid. So it's gonna start out as colorless. And as the alkali is added, you're gonna get those flashes of pink that you get during your titration but obviously if the acid's still there, it'll go back to colourless. When that magic drop lands in there and there's no acid left, it'll go pink. So the endpoint colour change is obviously colourless to pink. Moving on to part B. So you'll notice I've already put the answers in. I've underlined the zeros because they need to be there. You can't leave those out. Why do you carry out a trial titration? Well, that's basically just to get an estimate of the titra before you start doing the accurate titrations. And the next part, the calculation of the mean. So just remember, you never ever use the trial. So within these accurate titrations, we're looking for concordant results. So we're looking for results within 0 0.1 of each other. And obviously they're the concordant ones. So we're not gonna use this one. We are gonna use these, which gives a mean titrate of 18.25 cm cubed. Percentage uncertainty calculation, so there's the formula we use. So percentage uncertainty is the uncertainty of the apparatus divided by what's been measured, multiplied by 100. The important thing to remember here is a titra is based on two readings of the burette. So we need to double the uncertainty, which gives an answer of 0.55% for titra 1. So moving on to the calculation now, you can see I've got my trusty diagram just to visualise what's happened in the experiment. So they've taken this many grams of the acid, dissolved it in 250 cm cubed in a volumetric flask, taken 25 cm cubed out, put it in the conical flask, and carried out the titration using 0.24 mole per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide. We've already established the mean titra was 18.25 cm cubed. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the moles of sodium hydroxide used in the titration. So that's coming out at 0 0.00438 moles of sodium hydroxide. So the moles of the acid that's in the 25 cm cubed portion used in the titration, it's going to be half as many from the mole ratio in the chemical equation that they gave us, which is 0 0.00219 moles. So we want to know how many moles were in here, which are effectively the moles in the 2.891 grams. So obviously that's a tenth of the first solution, the original solution. So we just multiply by 10 now. So that's 0 0.0219 moles. And now we need to work out the MR of the acid. So it's just mass over those moles. 
which comes out at 132. So remember, we've got to find out the value for N, so we need to know how many CH2 groups are in the acid. Well, we do know that there are two COH groups, so we're going to subtract 90 from that, because that's the MR of two COH groups. So that leaves us with 42. So how many of these are going to go into that 42? Well, the MR of CH2 is 14, so just need to divide this by 14, which gives an answer to the nearest whole number of 3. And the final part of the question, so the student has washed out the pipette with water rather than the glutaric acid. It's a tiny bit of water therefore left inside this pipette. So they make it up to the mark for the titration. So the problem we've got is there's less glutaric acid in this pipette. So if there's less glutaric acid in there, they're going to be using less moles. Therefore the titrate is going to be lower. The other way you could explain it is the glutaric acid, because it's got a tiny amount of water in compared to before, it's more dilute or it's less concentrated and therefore the titrate is going to be lower. So any of those three explanations will be fine using less moles of the acid, it's more dilute or it's less concentrated.